Hope you're doing good. Michael back with another video. Back here to talk about iOS 18 beta 3.5 or iOS 18 beta 3 re-release. Yes, last week we covered the follow-up to the original iOS developer beta 3 and touched on the re-release to align the developer beta with the first public beta out for iOS 18 on your iPhone devices. And so we covered it, just covered some of the differences as to what we were getting when it comes to that release. And it came in around 360 megabytes, meaning that nothing much really came from it. If anything, Apple took some features away from the developer beta to align it with the public beta. And so that makes me question whether or not I should actually jump over to the to beta two of the public beta or stay the course of developer beta because now I don't know how they're gonna be playing with the features. You know, things are starting to stabilize a little bit more three betas in for the developer series. But for the public beta, how far is it going to be behind? It doesn't seem like it's really that far behind at, at all. If anything, it seems like the public beta is a little less stable than the developer beta. Granted, it is the first beta, but it does seem like it is very similar to developer beta 3. I know I just threw a bunch of words out there at you guys. Hopefully, I didn't throw you off too much. But one of the things that they actually took away was the ability to actually react with stickers. So in your emoji keyboard, down here, they had a slot to be able to have your stickers in line in text message. And that it also included your emojis. Well, with the re-release, this current build of iOS 18 beta 3 re-release or 3.5, as some of us are calling it, they took those away. And so seeing how the public beta is rolling out, because my wife is running it on her iPhone 14 Pro Max right now, these features aren't available. So it seemed like they rolled the developer beta back a little bit just to be more similar to the public beta. And this is, of course, evident when you look at the actual build number of iOS 18 developer beta 3. So if you come in here and go into iOS version, you'll see that we went from F to I, meaning we went a couple letters backwards, if you will. And that means we're a little less stable, less closer to the final release. We were doing a good job of kind of moving up the chain. And so it's going to be interesting to see whether or not I personally will update via developer beta and stay on developer beta 4 or jump over to the public beta for public beta 2. Now, currently, I'm ready to receive the public beta. And it, okay, I was about to say, is it here? So I'm, I'm currently ready to receive the public beta 2 because I switched it over. Because the builds are the same, it, I wasn't going to be able to install the public beta 1 because it's the same essentially as the developer beta 3 but i am ready to receive public beta 2 and for me i generally like running the public betas better or more than the developer betas and so that's something i definitely can suggest to those interested in finally tipping their toes dipping their toes rather into the beta waters is always try to start with the public betas because they're going to be a little more stable than the developer betas you have less problems and Again, it's something that's a little bit more of a preview for the features to come as opposed to the developer beta is um, more risky and running beta software period is risky, but the developer betas are a little bit more risky than the public beta. So if you're interested, I would definitely suggest jumping into the public beta. Make sure you back up your device first before you actually jump into the beta program for your Apple devices or devices nonetheless, because Samsung should be dropping their One UI 7 betas within the next couple months or so. And so we'll be looking forward to that on that side of things. But in terms of performance, how has the beta been so far? Well, I would say for the most part, it's actually been very smooth, very solid. I really haven't had too many issues. One of the issues I have had is in regards to the dark mode icons. If I switch to large, watch my JW app, because right now I have it on dark. I've just left it on dark mode. But if I switch it to large, you see even WhatsApp changes back to normal as well. 
something that I don't like, something, and really all four of those apps at the top kind of change a little bit, except for X. I don't like that. I want my large icons to stay consistent as well. So that way I can bring that back for my personal homepage setup because I like the larger icons because it gets rid of the labels and it gives it a much more clean look. So that's one of the issues I've experienced in terms of the control center. Haven't had any issues here. I've kind of changed it up a little bit. I removed my music page here just because I enlarged it here on my on my main control center page so that way i don't have to have so much i have to scroll through and so i find that to be very nice very 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 clean in terms of being able to have a, uh, a solid setup for my customized iphone now i keep ooh, only keep of okay so i must not no i have to yeah i do okay so i only keep a couple widgets here two different clock widgets a weather and a date widget this largely has not changed uh if i come in here and actually go into my journal app you guys will see that based upon looking here at the top here if it focuses as you guys can see you get new insights and as you see i'm on a six week streak probably like a two or three day streak within those six weeks i've journaled over 7800 words and I've journaled over 91 days in general. So I like the fact that the journal app provides you more insight into your journaling habits, how you use it. I use it very meditatively, if that's a word. I use it on the spot when I get a notification just to take a couple minutes out to just jot some things that's taken place throughout the day. Uh, where's my mind at? How I'm feeling. You can also, of course, log in your feelings for the day as well or feeling for that moment. I like that aspect for the journal app as well because now it combines it and makes it easier to think about while you're journaling. Something that I've kind of haven't done the last few journal entries, but something I, I'm going to get back into. So I do like the fact that they brought that in here with iOS 18. And overall, I would say everything has just been relatively smooth in terms of using the apps, using the new features outside of a couple bugs here and there it's been more or less pretty smooth battery life however has actually been interesting that's the one thing i have not liked about this beta is the battery life has been a little bit more drainy now that is again probably because it is still unfinished software a so unfinished programs in the background and c yes i guess we could go with c of course i use always on display so this could be affected right and then of course you know i still rock with brighter wallpapers despite using the darker icons and so just the emittance from the display is probably doing a little bit more draining and with rcs built into the messenger app no doubt this also is probably draining in the background trying to decide whether or not it wants to send rcs sms or imessage because prior to iOS 18 beta 3 re-release, RCS was having more issues trying to send as an iMessage as opposed to an RCS message, and then it would default to SMS. First failing, and then sending as a text message or SMS. Since then, I haven't really noticed any issues with sending messages, which is good, but because, again, everything's unfinished, that's going to drain the battery a little bit more, so I'm a little surprised by that, because this is kind of like one of the first or second times that you've heard me actually a bit disappointed with the battery life for my iPhone. And I'm rocking the 15 Pro, of course, I'm rocking the smaller boy, but for battery life to actually be significant for me to bring it up shows you that the, the iOS beta three or iOS 18 beta three or beta three re-release, whichever one you wanna go with, beta three in general has been a little bit more uh, power hungry for the battery than normal betas that I've even experienced on my iPhone 15 Pro. So take that for what you will, you know, just anticipate your battery life not being the greatest during the beta process because everything is still unfinished. But outside of that, I can say it's been a joy to be able to experience these uh, features, being able to use these features now with my wife's phone because she's on the beta. So now we can actually react with our emojis and stickers in terms of the tap back. So that's also been great to see. And being able to experience RCS with other individuals has been great. And it's even given me more confidence and funny enough, my wife <laughs> confidence for me to walk around my Android device and not have to worry about 
you know, not missing out on too many things such as, you know, uh, typing indicators and, and, and more secure messages, higher resolution photos and videos. You know, I wish Apple would have just took, just swallowed the pill and actually supported the better version of RCS. So this would not be a topic of discussion again. And that way you could actually, you could really put the iPhone ahead a lot further than you think by adopting the higher or more sophisticated form of RCS, in my opinion, I think Apple would have done a whole lot better doing that than just trying to do the bare minimums because it's not going to affect iMessage. If anything, it's going to help iMessage. It's going to help people want to use the iPhone and communicate the whole green bubble versus blue bu bubble thing. Although it is a, a real thing, users will still feel comfortable using the iPhone to message across anything because a lot of people use WhatsApp anyway. So it's kind of like just adopt the better form of RCS Apple. That's all you really had to do. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about the iPhone 15 Pro, iOS 18. What are your favorite features? Are you on the beta program? Are you running the developer beta or the public beta? Comment section is open for discussion. Again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you like the like button, subscribe to the channel, notification bell. It's all free. That way, it's my video so you and I can sit back, check, see what's cracking. And don't forget to hit that super thanks button down there by the like and dislike button, cash app and PayPal, and check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's the way to keep tech person alive on this channel. Twitter Micah signing out to the next video. Wait for it.